Okay, so even though this year has been weird for all intents and purposes from the start to where we are now, today is October 10th, 2025, I think late last night into this morning, one of the weirdest things have taken place in the Atlantic. And notice I didn't say the tropics, but I said the Atlantic. And then on top of that, we've got something else, a rather bona fide signal that's trackable that I will be keeping you ahead of as we continue through time getting into the middle sections of October and then especially approaching Halloween, which has been a fateful point in time that we'd mentioned even at the very start of 2025 on the calendar. Welcome back to the Weather Center, everybody. I'm not too sure what What's going on today, to tell you the truth? I came into this video and I sat here for no kidding about 10, 15 minutes with the most tremendous brain fog. Even right now, I'm talking and it's not, you know, I have my thoughts laid out and I have my notes like I always do, but I don't know. Have you ever had a moment like that where you know what you want to say or you know what you're going to do, but for some reason there's just this figurative wall right in front of you and you have to kind of just right cross it and take it down to get moving. And that's kind of where I am today, but regardless, welcome back to the Weather Center. It is Fry Yay. Happy Friday, everybody. If you are brand new to the channel and want reliable, accurate, and timely tropical updates, please kindly consider hitting that subscribe button. I need that little nudge. Let's nudge that like button. Take that second right now. Let's get that out of the way, please, if you could be so kind. Share this information with folks you believe would benefit from it, and then let me know in the comments what your thoughts are, especially if you're down there in the Caribbean, because once again, as we've mentioned in previous updates, I do think that's going to be the front line area that we'll want to monitor over the next seven to 10 days, especially with what I have to present to you. And with that being said, let's go ahead and get started. So this is National Hurricane Center's homepage. And I'm going to pause for a second and I want you to tell me what jumps out at you here. Yeah. Yeah. You know, a mid-latitude cyclone up there with the name Karen, you know, that's definitely a little bizarre, a little unusual, but you know what? They designated it yesterday after hiking our formation chances for an AOI that they stamped up there in the northernmost Atlantic. Now, I've seen some folks mentioning this is way up into the poles. It's not that far north. Okay, let's not get too carried away, but we are definitely in the coldest waters that the Atlantic Ocean to its entirety pretty much has to offer. This thing's kicking it in water temperatures anywhere between 65 to 68 degrees, but there it is. There's good old Karen, you know, and it's funny too, because I'm pretty sure, again, at the very start of this year, not the hurricane season, but way back at the start of 2025, during some of our tropical weather outlooks, we had mentioned as a community that Karen was either going to be an all or nothing system. In this case, it's definitely a kind of have to turn your head sideways and squint a little bit because it's up there and I guess we've got, you know, our next named storm on the board. Following this will be Lorenzo. We've gotten Jerry and Karen out of the way. Jerry's definitely struggling. Jerry may not even be on its way to becoming a hurricane anymore. You can see the latest advisory as of 11 a.m. Still around 50 miles an hour. It has actually weakened over the last 24 hours, and it's a very disheveled mess. It's very heavily sheared, and we're wandering closer and closer to the jet stream and very strong winds associated with high pressure to its north. That's also going to be sinking in over the southeast United States over the next day or two. So I think time is running out for Jerry. My sloppical storm analogy from the other day definitely held true, and it has not really organized anymore despite what hurricane models were initially saying what the gfs was predicting early in its life cycle and then we also have subtropical storm karen up there with sustained winds at 45 miles an hour and the central pressure down to 998 millibars bit of a difference there if you notice the pressure is at 998 but the sustained winds are only at 45 that's that subtropical characteristic it's got the core makings of a tropical system definitely into the mid-latitudes, this isn't really the subtropical Atlantic anymore, but it has what National Hurricane Center would consider enough sustained convection closest to that center to classify it. And then from there on in, we're going to be watching this area in particular. Let me pull up my Epic Pen for you. 
Uh, now it's not going to work. But where my cursor is spinning there, that's where I really want us to pay attention to. Our models are continuing to trend in a certain direction, and we're going to keep watching that, especially over the next seven days. I think this time next week, as we're ringing in another Friday into the following weekend, we're going to have something that we might really want to keep a magnifying glass or the microscope on. All right, I've rebooted my Epic Pen. I'll get my face out of the way so we can do a little bit of doodling. So one thing that jumps out to me immediately is this enormous rush of dry air and stable air coming off of the northeast United States and Atlantic Canada as a result of high pressure that's working eastward through the pattern up through the northeast quadrant of the U.S. If you notice to the south of where my black arrows are drawn, look at the upper level clouds really racing off towards the east-northeast. That's the polar front jet digging down. I'm still seeing some posts mentioning this feature here being some kind of tropical feature, and I'm here to tell you, based on my synoptic experience that is as far from the truth as we could possibly be. Yes, there's an area of low pressure trying to organize down there, but currently Weather Prediction Center and other analysis sources or analyst sources in the weather field actually have the low stamped over central and south Florida as the jet rocks through and tries to disrupt the flow, create a little bit of more rising action, and then eventually pull this up the east coast. That's what we had discussed in the last video. This is definitely going to be an unstable wave with fronts attached to it. You can kind of see a frontal appendage beginning to get going through the southern and eastern gulf, and then a bit of a warm sector beginning to develop out and through there. So we definitely have a temperature gradient with it. The jet stream is going to help to reinforce that. And unfortunately, we are seeing flooding conditions in central Florida's easternmost counties right up against the coast, Volusia, Brevard, and south from there. We've had training showers and heavier rainfall throughout the day today, but it's funny because I I think thanks to the mid and upper level flow rocking out of the west, really pummeling the air towards the east, we haven't seen a large amount of the rain, let alone any type of thunderstorms, really penetrate central interior Florida. I haven't seen anything here in my neck of the woods in Polk County. The sun's been shining outside a little bit on the cloudy side, but definitely have not seen any rain at all today. So I think this is mainly going to be a coastal event. And then this is Jerry down here. You really can't even recognize it at this point. I'll clear the ink and we'll take in for a closer view. This is what we have for Jerry. And in fact, it has pretty much left all of its convection behind. This screams, absolutely screams, Tropical Storm Philippe from 2023. If you've been watching and with me since that point, I remember covering that storm alongside its counterpart, Rena, off to the east extensively. And there was also a lot of weird information circulating that system. This definitely fully reminds me of Tropical Storm Philippe, a very, very close pass to the Leeward Islands before lifting due north. It looks like the center is extensively elongated. It's almost an oval-shaped, kind of like the Daytona International Speedway up there, rotating around with little to no convection associated with it. It is still very heavily biasing the southern half and the southeast quadrant of the system. The outflow is almost non-existent at this point either, so I would not be surprised if we maintain tropical storm status for another day or two, maybe a little bit beyond that, depending on where it decides to go from here. Model projections and the current forecast track actually have it taking a hard right turn back out into the central Atlantic, so maybe it can try to retain some of these tropical characteristics, but all in all, this is a disgusting system, and I gotta say, hashtag peak 2025 to tell you the truth. And then here is subslopical storm, subtropical storm, Karen. Now, We've lost a lot of the thunderstorms near the vortex. The vortex is right there, front and center, and you can see that this is still a predominantly jet-supported system. The jet is racing up from the south, headed north on the eastern side of this thing, and then we've got a reinforcing shot of jet stream energy coming in from its west. On the left-hand side of the screen, you can also see that familiar cloud stream coming into the left-hand portion of the graphic there. That's an extension of that high pressure and upper trough I showed you that's moving across the northeast United States and eastern Canada. So this thing is going to get pinched off and it probably won't be with us for, again, probably before the weekend is over with. We'll probably see a final advisory tomorrow, if not maybe late Sunday at the very latest. 
I really don't see this thing holding on very much longer, especially since we've lost even the subtropical characteristics with it. May even get a final advisory first thing tomorrow. We'll have to see what National Hurricane Center does. Very anomalous situation. If you look at the water temperatures, I wanted to put things into perspective. Not only are we at 46 degrees north latitude, but again, we're sitting between 16 to maybe 19 degrees Charlie, which translate once you do the conversion to about 65, 69 degrees Fahrenheit. So very cool water temperatures. Interesting feature, and without a doubt, this is definitely a one for the the books that we're all going to remember, thankfully not for its impactful or historic background, but just one of those got to scratch your head and wonder, you know, is was this something that happened during shift change at the National Hurricane Center? Did someone decide to pull the trigger last second? Were they carefully analyzing this? You know, it's definitely a weird call, but I'm not mad at it. We figured Karen was going to go wide left or wide right. It went wide left in this case. So, okay, now we're going to get into some of the models. We're done with our real-time analysis. This is where things get a little juicier. So if you've stuck with me, thank you very much. Now we're going to start breaking down the stuff that really has me intrigued. This is our latest tropical depression anomalies, our probabilities courtesy of the Euro this afternoon. And as early as the 17th, which is part of our new flagship Dayton time frame, still Still pinpointing the 17th out to beyond the 23rd. That is our new time frame. If you watched Wednesday's video, I'd mentioned I really don't like shifting the goalpost, but based on the information and the model data I have in front of me, I feel that was my best judgment call to get you guys ahead of what I think is still on the table. You can see as of the 17th, we've got a couple of the probabilities, some of the blue shades beginning to percolate in the Western Central Caribbean, and then it isn't until day 10. Look at that signal over there east of the Lesser Antilles. I think that's the one we're really going to have to watch. I believe the probabilities that are perking up near the Yucatan there, closer to the Southeast United States, the Cayman Islands and Jamaica, this cluster here, I believe this would verify this would grow in its formation chances if the trough that was coming down right now supporting our coastal system kind of stayed there. It didn't transition further towards the south like some of our other earlier computer model runs were insinuating because that would definitely help to create more low pressure and better characteristics for the overall environment in the Western Caribbean as opposed to if it were to dig down towards the south, that would definitely kill anything trying to develop, let alone any kind of Central American gyre signature. We would have that low pressure rising motion focused closer to Jamaica, Hispaniola, and the Turks and Caicos. And that is definitely not symbolic of what we look for in the CAG, as I like to say. But this one here off towards the right-hand side of the screen, that's an actual tropical wave that will be traversing the pattern. And I do think as it continues generally westward, it's in here where it becomes a key player for just about everybody. Some of our AI ensembles do think it may even get going as it approaches 60 west, so the Lesser Antilles will want to pay attention to this one, especially our friends in the Windward Islands, Trinidad, Tobago, closer to the islands nearest to Venezuela, and further towards the north from there. This one could be yours. We'll have to see. Right now, model trends don't suggest it's going to climb in latitude like our previous systems have done, which I know is hard to believe. It's kind of hard to believe for me even as well. I don't really feel comfortable saying that because Every other time, knock on wood right now, I've mentioned that the next day, if not the next model run, all of a sudden it's north of the islands and no one's being impacted. So trust me, I get it. I really do. We haven't been dealt a reliable, let alone any kind of consistent model runs this hurricane season, but I've been studying this for the last four days, give or take five days now, and when I show you the ensembles, this has been the trend. There haven't been any wide fluctuations at all, otherwise I would show you that. So let's go ahead and get into some of that right now. We're first going to look side by side at the Euro on the left, the GFS on the right, and I want you to notice we are fast forwarded to the 10 day mark, and both of these models have our tropical wave near the Lesser Antilles, particularly biasing the southern half of the islands there, the Windward Islands. If you notice, right in through there, there's that pocket of mid-level vorticity, mid-level spin on the GFS, a little more lackluster. If I were to take the GFS out further in time, though, you'll notice that as the wave moves in, it does start to get going in the Central Caribbean, south of Haiti and the Dominican Republic. This is where it gets interesting, though. I want to show you what the GFS is thinking, because 
because that is a potential solution on the table, but we'll get into that here in a moment. This is what the euro is showing, bit of formation deeper into the Caribbean when it gets to the portions of Central Caribbean, Southern Caribbean, south of Jamaica, pretty much due south of the Cayman Islands. We get a very broad envelope of spinning in the winds, turning in the winds, and I do think this might also be the influence of a front trying to dig down out of the northwest and that Central American gyre. This is our more optimal setup for the gyre. Like I would mentioned in the previous probabilities panel, when the trough comes down in just the right portion, just the right leading edge of it gets into this geographic area of the world like we saw with Helene last year, you get an increasing favorable interaction in terms of you get the lift focused where it needs to be and you get a little additional outflow provided by the nose of that trough. Very similar to what we saw with Helene and previous gyre systems. Now here's the GFS. I have it rewound, or I should say fast forwarded to the very tail end of the run. And the reason it starts to get a little bizarre out there and kind of pauses the system is if you look in your mid-level flow, there is an enormous frontal system that's forecast to come down right there. And the telltale sign of that that I learned during my time as a synoptic analyst in the Air Force is look at the Tawanapec winds there really racing into the east pack. That tells us that high pressure is seeping through, kind of like a lava flow finding that area through a canyon, slinging through there or water going through a canyon, racing out to the other side. Those are your high pressure winds in that air movement, that air advection as it's called, intruding on the eastern Pacific through the canyon there. And that tells me that there is a changing air mass sweeping in. And I think that's why the GFS kind of halts the progression of this system as opposed to quickly slinging it back towards the north. However, I do anticipate if we were to be able to go further out from time in here, this thing would probably turn towards the north in some short or some shape or fashion like this. Don't think it would go backwards, but it would definitely go almost due north, kind of like what we saw with Franklin in 2023. Or it could possibly round the nose of it and try to come up like this. Very trademark for what our October systems tend to do. And then finally, let me go ahead and change the perspective here. These are our DeepMind ensembles. This is the Gen C Google DeepMind ensembles. And you can see we haven't really wavered. Right now, what I'm paying most attention to is how it enters the Caribbean. And the bulk of our ensembles are right in through here, really favoring the windward islands. This is not the, le the leeward islands this time. Definitely more of a direct rollover. I'm not saying impact, but definitely a direct rollover through the Windward Islands and closer to the ABC Islands and the upper coast of Venezuela. And then you can see a large handful of them continue off towards the west where we could possibly see cyclogenesis as it gets into the larger portions, the greatest portion of water perimeter in the Caribbean. And then I'll show you the FNV3 ensembles real quick before we get ready to wrap up. You can see this one definitely a little healthier of a signal. This one shows if it gets stronger sooner... Definitely on the table. Do I think that's the most likely outcome? No. I think the Atlantic, especially closest to Africa, is going to be a little too hostile. Look at what's happening to Jerry right now. I really don't think this is going to be a quick developer. I really do think it will have to get beyond the Windward Islands, and then maybe by 60 West, if not just west of that, is when we'll see things really start to turn out a little bit more, especially with this. This is our latest velocity anomaly from the Euro. This just updated this morning, valid from yesterday all the way out through to just shy of Thanksgiving. And you can see that huge chunk of favorable forcing that's going to linger with us till the backside of October. We get a little bit of a break. That break, that suppressed sinking phase is trending a little bit stronger too. So I wonder what happens and what that does with our tropical wave. We'll have to see. But then you notice as we get to about Halloween and then through November, we're right back to business and it actually shows at least according to the mean here that we could have the favorable forcing sticking around for a good two or three week period of november this is your control member kind of helps to delineate where it is our most greatest forcing and where the focus is in our rising versus sinking anomalies and you see for a good portion of at least the first two and a half weeks of november the Atlantic, the Caribbean, the Gulf could still be on the more favorable side of things, so we'll keep an eye on that and watch these velocity anomalies as we just continue through the rest of the hurricane season. And that's the end of that. A little bit of a long-winded video. I wanted to cover all of our bases and kind of talk trends more than just what's happening specifically. I know I spent a lot of time on Karen as well. It just It's a peculiar system for me, that's all. But we'll go ahead and wrap up very quickly. Thank you so much for your time today. I look forward to talk to you again soon. I hope Friday has treated you well. You have a fantastic week. 
weekend, despite what may be happening here in the southeast or for our neighbors down there in Cuba, the Cayman Islands, over in the Yucatan, and the extension of the feature that we're dealing with here in Florida, back in the United States, the Bahamas, and wherever you're tuning in from. It's always great to hear from everybody, and I hope all will remain well for each and every single one of you. But until next time, this is Weather Center Nazario, signing out.